Hey everyone, so today, we're gonna try out something new and pretty cool. This is called Fantasy Portrait. It's coming from Alibaba's group. One of their teams developed this portrait facial animation framework based on the WAN 2.1 AI video model, and it's able to mimic your driving videos, like the examples you're seeing here. You've got a source video with a character's face, and then it uses that to drive the facial expressions in your AI-generated character, basically copying the expressions from the reference video. Here are some examples of what I just showed. And the cool thing is, this AI framework, built into the WAN 2.1 image-to-video model, performs really well. In some cases, it's even better than older versions like Fantasy Talking or other portrait animation tools like the popular one, Live Portrait, back in the old Stable Diffusion days. Han Yuan also did some comparisons here. You can see the reference video of the female character on one side and then the result from Fantasy Portrait below. It does a pretty nice job with very stable performance in capturing the facial expressions. Here's another example. This time, the driving video has different face angles. You see the face turn from the side back to the front, and Fantasy Portrait actually follows that head movement smoothly. Other frameworks? Not so much. Take Live Portrait, the good old one. It just crops the bounding box and animates that region, so it can't really handle head turns like this. But that's exactly where Fantasy Portrait shines. It's built to handle these kinds of complex motions. And here's another cool thing. It's not just for humans. It can animate animals too. Check this out. You've got a regular female character in the reference video, and then it's applied to a dog or a cat. It detects the facial expressions from the human video and mimics them on the animal. So yeah, you can totally use this with animated styles, 3D models, hyper-realistic characters, you name it. You can even use 2D, 3D, sketchline art, or hyper-realistic styles as your source. As long as there's a face in the driving video, this thing can work with it. The facial detection here works pretty well, so we're gonna try running this locally using a local AI setup. We'll check out how to practically use a pre-recorded audio-driven video as a reference to animate an AI-generated image basically turning it into a talking avatar for your AI video. Now, of course, we're using the WAN 2.1 model and we'll be using the WAN video wrapper, which recently got an update. The official Fantasy Portrait GitHub repo announced on August 14th that it's now integrated into the Comfy UI WAN video wrapper. So you'll need to update your WAN video wrapper. You can do it the command prompt way. Just use git pull and it'll update only that repo folder. After that, you'll see a new Fantasy Portrait folder added to your ComfyUI custom nodes. Here's the thing, look at these two files, Face Landmark and Face Detection. These are gonna help a lot with facial recognition and expression tracking. We'll be testing them out in ComfyUI. As you can see, I've already run a few examples. But before we get into that, let's go over what you need to download after updating the WAN video wrapper. There's now a Fantasy Portrait model loader a custom node. I've got the save tensor files for the WAN 2.1 Fantasy Portrait FP16. You'll need to download these from the Hugging Face repo under the WAN Vito's Comfy page. Go into the Fantasy Portrait folder. That's where the save tensor files are. It's about 2 gigabytes, so you'll need around that much VRAM to run it smoothly. Plus, we'll still be using the WAN 2.1 image to video models. In this case, I usually go with the 720p version. I'm using the i2 v14b model at 720p. But if you've got less VRAM, you can go with something lighter, like the 480p image to video model. That'll work too. Now, back to the comfy UI workflow. Let's play around with this. First, Fantasy Portrait works based on an image. As you can see, I've already got some examples generated. Here's my character image. Above it, I've got some old results from Live Portrait for comparison, and then I generated a short clip just a few seconds to test this out. It's able to mimic eye movement, lip motion, even little details like wrinkles and cheek movement. All of it is being copied from the reference video. And like I mentioned earlier, the landmark oxymodel files, after the latest update, you'll have access to them. You can connect them to visualize the facial landmarks, showing exactly where the eyes, eyebrows, lips, and even cheek muscles are moving. Even the nose movement is being tracked. 
That's thanks to the embedded landmark detection in the WAN AI model. It acts like an external model loader that works alongside the WAN 2.1 image to video model, kind of like how multi talk, fantasy talking. So when you go into the model loader settings, you'll see options like WAN videos, block swap, and fast sampling steps. I've got the image to video light X2V here to keep the sampling steps low. In this example workflow, it's set to six steps by default. You can go higher if you want, but for prototyping, six is fine. I wouldn't go too high, like eight or more. Here, we're using shift five by default. That might limit body movement a bit, but if you're only focusing on facial expressions, shift five works well as a starting point. For the scheduler, we're using DPM++, not UniPC, which is what we usually use for image to video. Just keep that in mind. And for context options, I added this myself to test longer video generations. Sometimes facial expressions go beyond 81 frames, right? So this is a handy add-on. Connect the context options. It'll split the video into 81 frame chunks and generate them together, giving you a longer, continuous output. Let's try another example. I'll use this reference video. See how the character is talking, making expressions, and even moving their head at different angles. Now, instead of a human, I'm going to use a non-human character, like this creature. Let's see if the framework can handle something more unique. Next, we set the width and height. Usually, we set the frame count here, but in this test, I want to try 546 frames, so I'm connecting the context options I just mentioned. One more thing. The WAN video wrapper updated the text encoder. Now there's a custom node that combines all the text encoder models into one. Some people prefer it this way. It's just more convenient to have all the options in a single node. So, for example, I've got an elf character talking. I'm just using a simple text prompt, something like an elf talking. That's all you need, really, since we're relying on the facial landmarks to drive the animation. Let's run it and see what we get. Took about 7 minutes to generate 546 frames. Now let's bring in the source video, the landmark video, and our generated result, side by side. Look at this. The landmark from the reference video captures lip movement, head nods, blinking, everything. And it's all been transferred smoothly into the AI-generated video. Looks really good. Even with a non-human character, it's mimicking the facial expressions perfectly. The elf is doing talking motions, and even the wings, those boneless parts on the back, are moving naturally with the body. Looks pretty solid. Here's the full view. 34 seconds of generated video with all the 81 frame chunks stitched together. You might notice some color shifts or minor inconsistencies between chunks, but overall, the quality stays consistent with the original frames. Actually, it's looking a lot better now than it used to. So, for character motion, I think this is super useful, especially for content creators. You're not always working with human characters, right? Maybe you're doing cartoons, 3D animations, or fantasy scenes with elves or animals. This framework handles all of that. And if you've already got AI-generated characters, you can just take a still image and animate it using this method. So far, I'm really liking Fantasy Portrait. It feels practical and usable in real-world situations, like when you're creating talking character videos. You can record yourself as a reference and have your AI character mimic your expressions. That can seriously cut down production costs. For things like online ads, like what my company does, I could totally use this in our pipeline. And hey, you could use this for AI-driven characters in your AI movies. All right, that's it for this video. Hope you got something out of it. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. See ya.